So, uh, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this episode of Control Structure. It's episode for June. So, uh, let's see. Uh, let's get started here. Oh, hey Ryan. How's it going? I haven't talked to you since last time. Yeah, I know. It's been so long. There's um some some kind of important event going on right now. It's called E3. Do you know anything about that? Oh, you mean that one circus show in Los Angeles? Yeah, I know about that one. Well, yeah, yeah. Do you do you want to do a show about that? Because um, I hear it's a special event, and uh, we need to do a show about it. Hmm. You know what? It kind of felt kind of strange doing another episode of my podcast so sh- soon. And besides, it's not like anybody actually listens to it. So, yeah, come on. This is a Nexus Special, Episode 30, E3 2014, on June 11th, 2014. This episode is hosted by Andrew Bailey, with guest Ryan Rampersat, and now with Ella Pants. So, uh, how do we generally start these things? We start them by talking about what we're talking about. That seems rather sensible. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, yeah, I guess we're going to be talking about E3, Uh, so... I seem to be, like, the next on the list of uh, competent Nexus hosts uh, that knows about gaming. Yes. Yes, pretty much, actually. Ah, well, that feels pretty good. So, uh, before we actually get started into the, uh, you know, talking about E3 proper, you know, we're going to be seeing a lot of uh, trailers for games. So many. uh, uh, If we actually had video. Yeah, we don't. Uh, but apparently, uh, you know, you you see these trailers being released by these game developers, and some of them aren't actually made by those game studios themselves. Uh, apparently, they're uh, some of them are outsourced, and uh, one of these other outsourcing uh, places is called uh, Blur Studios, and they recently released a mashup of some of the trailers that they've done. Uh, I call it the most epic five minutes of your life. Overhyped. So, I mean, and, maybe a little bit overhyped, but it was still pretty good. Yeah, and this is like a mashup of maybe like five or seven game trailers, mm-hmm. uh, plus some goldfish. Yes. Enjoyable. Uh, for good measure. Um, and, you know, looking at all of this, I almost sort of don't want to know how much, like, all of these cost oh, put together. Oh, so much. So, uh, apparently Blur Studios has also done some commercials, and uh, let's see... And there, like, they have, like, Intel commercials, I think Toshiba, and I think they did also did some Apple ones as well. You see, so. you would never know that another studio makes the game trailers. You would always just assume that the studio themselves does it. No, I think it makes perfect sense, because you see the trailers, and it's always better than the game. Yes, that is true. And they look totally different. Yeah. Makes you wonder how they do that. Yeah. And by totally different, I mean totally better. Yeah, different. Especially the, like the NFL games and the sports like from EA. I wonder if that's due to like pre-rendering or better rendering for like the cutscene like aspects. See, I always wondered that they went to a football field and filmed the guy and then made it more computer generated. Oh, I'm sure they do. Like, mm-hmm. so uh, hey, do you want to buy the world's largest video game collection? Uh, no, it sounds expensive. I also agree. Apparently, it you can grab it for about $100,000 or so. Hmm. It, it contains about 11,000 unique title and platform combinations. You know, I don't I don't think that would be very useful to me because like most of those would be old games and I don't I really don't interest myself in old games. Yeah, and some of them are also for like very like esoteric platforms. Yeah, like, like the Amiga. I'm talking about like a game console that was only released in Brazil. Okay, then. Well, so that's useless. It's cool uh, to look at. So, yeah, apparently this guy has, like, a basement full of shelves, and they're all full. Glue each so, one to your wall to make a very, very large mural. And, like, apparently that's only a fraction of the collection. That's, a, that's absurd. So, and this was actually verified by Guinness Book of World Records uh, as, like, being the largest. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so yeah, enough talking about whatever. Uh, so let's talk about E3, or the Electronic Entertainment Expo. 
Uh, this is uh, apparently subtitled as The Future Revealed. Uh, so, uh, like, I'm not sure what exactly determines that. I mean, I can't really tell a theme for this, uh, but I can tell the theme that Ryan's doing right now in that if you want to uh, look at our show notes, uh, it's going to be at the nexus.tv slash ns30 because this is the 30th episode of uh, the Nexus special. Good. I'm glad it actually is. So, uh, slight disclaimer beforehand. Uh, this show is primarily designed for people like marketers, executives, and the press. It's not exactly geared towards gamers. Which is sad. Uh, that, uh, which, you know, that being said, it isn't totally useless to us. Especially because of the next gen, it goes without saying that all of these games look good, or look great, or and so forth, unless otherwise noted. Uh, personally, I will be using the term next gen uh, to describe the newest consoles until there's another next gen to uh, replace it. Seems reasonable to me. So, and also seems reasonable because there are so many games, uh, like, we're pretty much going to mention them and, like, a brief description, so we're just kind of have to rush through these. Well, and there's and then, so much and then so- stuff to talk about that isn't, yeah. like, we don't have a lot of information other than what they showed, so that's why. Pretty much. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and we can rush through these and at the end of every section, like, pause and, like, sort of reflect. Yeah, sounds good. So, um, let's start out with the Microsoft uh, press conference. Okay. Or at least the Microsoft-focused things. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it's about the said press conference, they mostly focused on games. Uh, they weren't really talking about their TV features or their controller things, just games, uh, which seems to be a fairly good strategy for them. So they showed uh, Forza 2 uh, Evolve, uh, Evolve being an, like an asymmetrical four versus one team based uh, FPS. Yeah, the the eight bit people have been talking a lot about it the past few weeks. Yeah, uh, it seems to be pretty unique. You know, it's it's not like a Team Fortress two or anything. So yeah, you essentially play as like a huge monster, and then four other people are trying to shoot at you. A huge, really powerful monster. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, apparently you start off, like, pretty dinky and small and weak, and then you grow to, like, you know, like, epic proportions. Yes, after eating people. So, uh, they showed Sunset Overdrive, which is a team-based something, probably shooter. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a shooter, but it's also kind of like, um, a comedy shooter, too. Yeah, uh, from what they showed of it, it seemed like that's what it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, they showed Fable Legends, uh, which looks exactly like another Fable, yep. but without Peter Molyneux's super fluid false promises with this one about how it's going to be the best game ever. So It was overpromised they... too many times. I don't believe them anymore. So uh, did you ever uh, catch on to those? No, because I never played them, because after having seen enough, I just didn't care anymore. Um, I never played them, but I remember Peter Molyneux just, like, flipping out. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is, so Microsoft also showed Halo, the Master Chief Collection. Now, that was uh, good. Uh, that will be due out on November 11th, so this will contain Halo 1, 2, 3, and 4 at 1080p, 60 frames a second, which seems to be a rarity on the X-Bone. Do you know how they uh, accomplished that? Um... Well, essentially, these are old games, right? so they really didn't need to do much, but no. apparently they're going to be upscaled and remastered. Right, so um, the the Halo 1 is the Halo 1 Anniversary Edition, the Halo 2 is the new Anniversary Edition of Halo 2, so the original engine is available, but you can now look at their fancy new pants rendering engine or something. And, and because so, all of these were for non-Xbox One platforms, apparently they can run fast. Yeah, mm-hmm. so apparently these will come with uh, 100 multiplayer maps in total. Uh, new multiplayer maps, I think. Uh, well, they said that there would be new maps, but also all of the originals, too. So, so which we can is... finally play Blood Gulch the right way. It's the best map It ever. is the best map. And the that's only the, one everyone The only I've... map that you can't play in any game after Halo 1. I've heard about that. So, uh, But if this comes to PC without any kind of shenanigans... I'm going to have to threaten, you know, Microsoft. I will buy that. I would buy it too. I would love to be able to play Halo One, Two, Three, and Four even on a computer the right way without that club controller. 
Um, I'm pretty sure it will still support the club controller. I don't need the club controller. I want the mouse, an instrument of precision. So uh, let's not bring up those old uh, feuds. Uh, please see the fringe for more details. Indeed. Uh, let's see, they showed off tons of indie games, uh, which are so numerous that I've forgotten about them all. The only one I remember is that, uh, the, the one that it's caused all the 2048 clones. What is it, threes or something? Uh, threes, yes. Yeah. So, uh, they, after that, they showed Scalebound, uh, which seems to be a lot of dragons in that. Mm -hmm. So apparently you can ride dragons to fight dragons or something. It's the best way to do it. Uh, they, uh, got all, then they got all nostalgic and, uh, talked about Crackdown. Uh, apparently there's gonna be a new one of those. I have no idea what it is, but it looks like you're in a gang war of some sort. It's also like, um, I feel like it might be a remake, even. Um, so they, there that, was an original Crackdown, and then this one might be like Crackdown 2 or something? Or uh, Crackdown 3? Not sure. I don't know how it works. Yeah, me neither. Uh, but something I do know how it works is The Witcher. Uh, the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt will be released on February 25th, 2015. It's the sequel to Witcher 2, and it's supposedly the ending to the series. It's uh, essentially a really in-depth dark fantasy R RPG. And uh, not only is it coming to Xbone, it'll also be coming to PS4 and PC. That's good. Of course. Um, right now I'm actually playing through, uh, Witcher 2. Mm -hmm. I'm sort of like towards the end of that. So, uh, it's, it's one of those games where it's, it takes itself really seriously. Mm -hmm. And, uh, there's like no moral good or wrong. It's, it specifies, it pretty much specializes in all sorts of gray decisions. Um, like for instance, uh, like you're sent out to defend some crates on a dock and you fight off the monsters. Then some elves come up and say, uh, which are rebels in this situation and say, Hey, these are our supplies, you know? And then you're like, uh, the owner of the shop never told me about you guys. And then you have an option of, you know, letting them have the supplies or killing them. And that has more implications later on in the game. Mm -hmm. Like someone dies if you give them those supplies. That's that's that sounds like fable actually. So and you know there's like again it's but you know like there's no you know objectively good or objectively bad decisions. Mm -hmm. It's you know kind of murky and uh, uh, the main character in this story is Geralt of Rivia, uh, which is a monster hunter. He goes around you know that's what he does for a living. He just goes around killing monsters, and those monsters may in fact be people. So, yeah, watch out for that. Yeah, I, I, I saw the trailer. Something about a griffin. It looked pretty good. Uh, I, I just feel like I would never play that kind of a game because it's so, like, there was a point where you had to jump across, like, a little river and, like, on a cliff, and it's just absurd. Yeah, uh, there's, like, a lot of those acrobatics in the second one. Mm -hmm. uh, but you might actually like to play this one because, uh, for the first time, Geralt can jump. I do like jumping. That is, that is a thing. You gotta jump sometimes. That's right. Uh, and all of this sort of feeds back. They didn't actually like go over it any, but they recently relifted the Xbox Live Gold requirement to play Netflix on your Xbone. And other and, apps. Yeah, probably some other apps too. Yeah. And they are now selling a Connect Free Xbone SKU for about $399. Yep. Uh, they apparently also released a patch in that the 10% processor reservation for Connect has also been lifted because of this. Mm -hmm. So perhaps some older games, quote unquote, will be patched to take advantage of this and improve their graphical fidelity. Right. So perhaps, you know, it might be on par with the PS4 graphical quality. I doubt it. But it might close the gap quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So based on the Microsoft event there how do you think they did uh they did pretty much what they uh should have in that you know they stopped talking about all this weird connect crap or all this controller crap and just focused on games mm -hmm. um that's kind of seems that uh what both uh next gen systems really need right now is you know games, games on them yep uh because both of them kind of launched with i don't want to say subpar but you know you know like not really that interesting, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of games coming out are still being tied to the current gen systems, right? 
Um, and, you know, games are still coming out for those as well. So, and, you know, of course, you know, like, you know, the, uh, you know, the EA games and the Ubisoft games like Assassin's Creed and Battlefield, uh, are going to be available on both, you know, competing PC, platforms. Right. Uh, sometimes PC. Yeah. Um, so, uh, stand by for garbage truck. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't want to say that, you know, they're both holding them back. Uh, but you know, there definitely needs to be a larger library in order for these things to take off, mm-hmm. um, which will be a problem for another company. Uh, but we will, uh, save that for later. Yeah. So, so EA. Uh, EA and now sport, uh, they announced <laughs> NFL Madden 15. Uh, yes, there will be sport NHL 15. And of course there will be sport FIFA 15 and there will be sport UFC 15. And of course, sport PGA Tour fifteen. So all those have fifteen in it. Do those come out this year or next year? I believe they will be coming out this year. Oh, that's good. So, and I recall there being a little bit of uh, pointing out, at least on FIFA fifteen. Mm-hmm. At least the PC version will be using their newer engine. Uh, so the graphical requirements will be higher, uh, but it will look much prettier as well. Oh, that's good. Which uh, might be a problem for, uh, you know, since this game is primarily popular overseas, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like apparently overseas people are poor and may not be able to afford good PCs to, you know, play this. Right. Uh, But, you know, I think it's like universally appreciated that they're doing something. Mm -hmm. So uh, EA also uh, showed off a lot of Dragon Age Inquisition. So, you know, I'm not really familiar with this series. I played um, a little bit of the first one. No idea what it was called. Origins I hear or something. That, yeah, I hear that there are dragons somewhere. You know, I never got to a dragon, but I'm sure there is. Yes. Um, if you want dragons, just play Skyrim. Yeah. And be happy about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, they announced uh, Battlefield Hardline, or maybe not announced, uh, like they showed it off quite mm-hmm. a bit. Um uh, they're going to be having a closed alpha pretty soon and a closed beta sometime uh, next month, and I believe it will be releasing sometime in October. The consensus is is that it feels sort of like a mod and not a you know full complete installment to the series that's worth like sixty bucks. Um, you know because this is like a cops and robbers type of deal. Yep. So and they showed off a little bit of that. Uh, so yeah, and I think they're they're. Uh... Beta will be coming out sometime later too, for um, PC and PlayStation Four too. Yeah, um, uh, I think this was the one where they, uh, like, at the end of the press conference, they uh, said, "Hey, we got like sixty-four Playstations over there. Go play them afterwards." I mean, it seems like there's a lot of platforms that this game is on, so that's good. Yeah, uh, there's. Uh, they showed off a little bit of Star Wars Battlefront, the next one of those. Uh, there's going to be Sims 4, uh, which they sort of demonstrated. Apparently, your Sims have more emotions now. They have more polygons, so they have more emotions. More polygons, huh? Yes, that's a David Cage reference. Hmm. Uh, the guy that did Heavy Rain. So is this one going to require always online access, just like SimCity or whatever it was? Uh, n- not clear from uh, oh, what they said. Man, you know, you think they would have learned the last time. I think they kind of have. Good. So, I mean, you know, we've recovered lost technology that allows people to save and load SimCity games. Offline. Unheard of. Yes. Yes. I mean, remember me firing up uh, 20th Century here? Yep. You know, we could do that like 20 years ago. So, um, they announced Dawngate, uh, which is going to be yet another MOBA, like uh, uh, LOL and uh, what's the other one? Uh, uh, Dota. Dota, Dota yeah. 2. Mm-hmm. Which and, is unacceptable, by the way. So, uh, yeah, I think the mobile market is getting pretty crowded. Well, everybody that, uh, wants to be in it because apparently it makes for good streaming or something. Yeah, and it uh, looks like Bethesda is go- doing a MOBA, and I think Crytek is as well. So, yeah, have fun with that. Yeah, I don't know about that. Uh, there's going to be a Mirror's Edge 2, and they showed this off. It's going to be a prequel. Really? Uh, and it's still called 2? Yes. That's weird. Or that's like the informal name. Um, okay. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, I recall playing through the first one and there being a Snowden Plaza in there. 
So will there be a green walled place or a point or a poitrous point? Mm-hmm. So uh, I, you know, kind of creeped me out there in that, you know, there's the NSA leaker, uh, you know, the name in, um, you know, Mirror's Edge. And this is sort of the, how should I say, uh, the environment in which, you know, oh, there's ubiquitous spying everywhere. So, yeah, that kind of creeped me out when I played through it. Uh, the next Mass Effect is definitely in production in Montreal. Uh, they showed a brief video, and all that we really got was an N7 insignia and a naked Krogan that's roaring. Well, I don't know. What do you think about that? Well, I advise everyone to be skeptical, mm -hmm. and especially given the recent track record of Mass Effect. So, personally, I'm waiting uh, for this next series to complete, if it indeed it is a series, and then judged based upon the reception of the last one and the uh, subsequent installments between. So, uh, have a big week, Mass Effect, and I might see you in about a decade. I feel like if they make more Mass Effect games, I feel like they shouldn't do necessarily a series. Uh, they should just make some more standalone things set in the same universe. That'd be much yeah. easier for them. Yeah, like a lot of people have been suggesting, you know, maybe, you know, there'd be like a crime thriller mm -hmm. type game, like set on the Citadel or something. Right, right, absolutely. Because, you know, it's a big universe. I mean, why not use some of it? Exactly. You know, you know, there it they sort of, you know, finished, you know, the first series with, you know, like everything being destroyed mm -hmm. and like epic existential terror. Right. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you know, I guess there's not really much f else that you can go, much further, you know, you can go with that. Right. Well, I mean, it doesn't have to take place necessarily after the games have finished. It could take place just somewhere else. Yeah, uh, maybe, like, during or maybe even before. Yeah, exactly. So, and, uh, you know, like there's been suggestions about it being, like, even historical, even, like, even before humans have been known to this universe. That's even better. So, uh, but it's sort of, like, hand-strung on, like, oh, this kind of, like, needs to take place. Mm -hmm. But, hey, you can, like, kind of trash that and make your own history. Yeah. So, uh, we do know that this new Mass Effect game is using Frostbite 3. It's the same as the last Battlefield. I think it was number four. So, it looks very pretty and very mantly on AMD. That's good. So, they're also, I think Bioware is also making a new sci-fi I think it's a sci-fi uh, game. So, yeah, stay tuned. Hmm. We'll see. So, uh, yeah, what would you think about the uh, EA? Uh, you know, it's uh, they, as their usual tradition, they have the sports, and they have a few other non-sports games that make up the bulk of their offering. Uh, yeah, I didn't really see them pushing anything different. No, and, and they didn't use any of the unique capabilities, as far as I can tell, that either platform offers... Uh, obviously, they didn't use Connect, and obviously, they didn't really uh, push for any fancy pants integration between Vita and PS4. So, you know, it's just normal games, which is fine. I'm I'm glad yeah. they don't have gimmicks. Gimmicks are bad. You know, you know it's uh, I guess you could say it's a winning combination, right? But you know, they could be doing more in like actually announcing original stuff. So, I mean. I I, I guess we could talk about it later, but I guess the, the general idea of bringing new IP to any console or any anywhere in the game. So, so yeah, let's go ahead and move on to Ubisoft. So, they uh, pretty much started off with uh, Far Cry 4, mm -hmm. uh, which we've been, uh, which we've uh, sort of known about for a while. Uh, it now has bus shootings and angry elephants. Elephants. So you'll have to tell me more about that. Yes. So, uh, you know, you pretty much start off, uh, like this eccentric dictator, essentially, mm -hmm. like way up in the Himalayans. Yep. Uh, Himalayan mountains. So it seems like it, uh, goes off of the previous Far Cry formula of like liberating like fortresses and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, so I forget like there, what mission that you were on. Or what the guy was on, but uh, apparently he got a wingsuit, uh, like a grappling hook and a bomb, and like you know, pretty much destroyed some outpost. And then he flew down to like some valley and uh, liberated this uh, fortress thing. And uh, so an elephant got really angry in that. I see. And apparently, your like helicopter dropped into there as well. But uh, yeah, 
elephants. So I don't really know too much about the Fred Care series. So is the guy that you see, like, sitting down or something, the one who's the, the, the villain? Is that how it yes. works? Okay, so, like, what's with the villains and the absurd hairstyles they have? Like, is that just a thing? I guess so. It's... I guess there's something about them that you want to hate. Okay. Well, I was I was really quite fond of it, really. So I don't know. So uh, they announced uh, or something they showed off uh, Just Dance 2015 mm-hmm. and Just Dance Now, uh, the one with smartphones. Yeah. Now this one's really different. So apparently you need some kind of screen. It can be a computer. It can be a TV. As long as the screen has some kind of internet connection, apparently this will work. I don't know how that's true, but we'll see. And then you take your phone or tablet or whatever, and then you dance around with it over Wi-Fi 3G or 4G. And it scales up to be inclusive to any number of people. So on stage, they had like 40 people dancing around. Yeah. Now, they didn't show like how that worked, and I don't believe it can be in any way nearly as accurate as if you're using like a Wii U nunchuck or a, an Xbox or a PlayStation Move. So yeah, I don't know. Um, it's a good I'm idea. Not re- I'm not really interested in this because I'm not a hipster. I'm in <laughs> not California, and I can't dance. Yeah, but you know, kids love this thing. Uh, whenever kids uh can do it, they do it. So uh, they showed off Tom Clancy's The Division. Another one, huh? It, yes. Uh. Uh, not to be confused with another Tom Clancy game. Yeah, like all of them? Uh, well, in this very, uh, what they showed off in this very conference. Right. Uh, but the division is about a, some sort of a biological apocalypse happening in New York City. And uh, it looks like it's a team based, uh, first, uh, team based third person shooter. Mm-hmm. So, uh, they announced the crew, uh, which looks like it's a, I was just say cross country racing game. It looked kind of sweet. So, uh, they showed off Assassin's Creed Unity. It seems that Ubisoft might be the most qualified big game company to make a game about the French Revolution, uh, seeing as how they're headquartered in Paris, I think. Clever. Uh, so this is still not the Assassin's Creed that I'm looking for. I was, if anything, I'm looking for something more along the lines of an Assassin's Creed Blood Dragon. I would pre-order that shit now. <laughs> you know, I kind of agree. Uh, you know, I don't think I've seen a non-serious Assassin's Creed. So, and, you know, because it it would be sort of the one that everyone's waiting for. Mm-hmm. You know, like, everyone's, you know, said, it was like, hey, can this be in set in modern day now? So, so now, is this Assassin's Creed, so I'm pretty sure 4 was released, you know, a while ago. Yeah. So, is this l- literally number 5, or is Unity, like, a uh, keyword there for something else. Uh, it's definitely not keyword for the Unity engine. No. Um, like, is it like a fake MMO or like how does that work? Uh, there's definitely going to be a multiplayer. I think a cooperative okay. type of thing. Mm-hmm. So uh, there seems to be, uh, speaking of the cooperative stuff, there's going to be like some character creation going on. Mm-hmm. There seems to be plenty of controversy over the omission of female assassins. And, of course, knowing the sensitivity of everyone on these kinds of topics, I guess that, you know, everyone's getting so mad over this. Yeah, I guess so. On one hand, though, we've already had, what, four full games and tons of DLC where there are no female assassins. Plus plus the other two, uh, number two spinoffs. Right. So, you know, I guess if you were going to be angry about this, you kind of lost your chance to get it early. Yeah. And they claim that, uh, you know, doing, supporting, uh, female characters would add twice the amount of work. I don't uh, know if that's true. Uh, at least to the animating and character design and whatnot. Uh, you know, they do do a lot of jumping, so maybe. Hey, speaking about jumping, how about Shape Up? Well, there's a lot of jumping in this game. Yes, it's sort of like Wii Fit, but for the X-Bone. And it's way more... I guess interactive, or at least it feels more in depth. So, so there, I, I mean, I, I watched the uh, the demos of it, and so there's two major aspects of it. Um, so the first one would be like you can record yourself doing some kind of activity, whether it's like a fake dancing game or you know push ups or sit ups or whatever, and then you can compete against yourself from a previous session. That's pretty cool. It's a yeah. gimmick, but it's cool. Um, it might actually be useful. Right. So then you can see your progress over time. If you're having a bad day, you'll notice. Uh, you know, it seems like a great idea. And then the other thing they showed off was literal multiplayer support. So with the Wii U, or with the Wii and the Wii Fit, you know, with that balance board, only one person could 
legally stand on the board. Legit. Yeah. And then uh, this one, with the shape-up thing, and presumably with the uh, connect, you can have two people doing two activities at the same time, and it will let you compete against each other, and not, like, you know, one after another, but at the same time. It's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, they showed off Valiant Hearts. It's a World War One based game. I'm not exactly sure what it looks like, at least how the gameplay looks like. Mm-hmm. Uh, but all they showed off was a dog walking around a battlefield. Great. Well, you know, dogs do sell games, so I guess that's how it works. Yeah. Uh, see also the uh, the Call of Duty dog. Yes, exactly. Everyone else flipped out over that. I really don't care. No, I don't either. So uh, then they showed off Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Seed. Hmm, another one, huh? Yeah. Uh, I think this is a little bit more distinct in that it's a Rainbow Six game. Right. So they pretty much showed off like a hostage situation inside of a house. So it definitely looks like it's a co-op, uh, at least like multiplayer, mm-hmm. like four versus four or something. Uh, it's sort of like a, uh, like a counter strike, uh, sort of deal where, you know, you're escorting a hostage. Although I imagine that there'd be several other gameplay modes. Right. So, uh, they have, uh, so like they pretty much finished that off. Um, so, uh, in other venues, uh, Ubisoft apparently mentioned that they have at least one game that's already made and good to go for Wii U. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's just waiting for more Wii U's to be sold. So I don't know if this actually happened, but maybe five months ago or so, sometime last year, yeah, I guess that was longer than five months now, right? Um, sometime last year, Ubisoft essentially said that you know, we're not going to even try making money games for the Wii U because they just aren't making enough. And then as we kept getting dismal numbers, they kept saying the same thing. Yeah. It's so, a, and people aren't going to buy them unless there's going to be good games for them. Right. Well, so it's, it's a wh- negative feedback cycle. So um, do you, what kind of game do you think they could make for it? Honestly, I have no idea. So, like, of course they can, you know, port their, you know, fa- famous games, in, like Assassin's Creed or whatever, but if it was original, what game would take you make use of either Numchuck stuff, you know, Wiimote stick stuff, the, or the obvious, uh, gamepad stuff? Yeah, the obvious thing is, is like some sort of asymmetrical game. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, for instance, just off the top of my head, I'm not exactly, exactly sure if there's actually a game released like this. But like a D and D type of thing. Oh yeah, definitely. Like you know, where the dungeon master would have the tablet yep. and everyone else would be looking at the TV. Right. Yeah, with the so. sticks. Yep. That would that would be good. And I feel like um, there could be some unique concepts go down that direction. But I, again, Ubisoft is clearly right here that it's just not worth the investment until units are available. And then uh, uh, let's see. And then like some some other games have you know. Uh, like implemented some sort of like a menu system yep. on the gamepad, mm-hmm. like a inventory or something, or a, like a mini map or something. You know, that's less innovative, but it makes sense. But on the other hand, I feel like you could accomplish that with some other magic uh, elsewhere. So, I mean, uh, like you could pause it or something, and you know, it, if the, if if you would like to keep something from other people not watching, mm-hmm. you know, like the same with the dungeon master thing. You know, there could be uh, plenty of potential there. Yeah, I think asymmetric is really the key thing here. Or maybe not, if not asymmetric, but maybe like a different source of information. But otherwise, yeah, I, I don't know. I think the key words we're missing here is second screen. Yeah, but I don't even know if the second screen is really necessary for playing games. So, I mean, another use case they mentioned was, you know, if someone else wants to use the TV, you could continue on the gamepad. Yeah. But, you know, that's it's questionable sort of... at best. Exactly. I mean, uh, like initially when I first look at the packaging, I'm like, oh, you don't really need a TV anymore because there's a screen that comes with it. But not really. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, let's uh, talk about Sony. Sony? Sounds good. Yes. They showed off Destiny. Destiny. Uh, this is, yeah. This mm-hmm. is Bungie's first post-Halo game. And the reason I say this is because Bungie was, were the guys that made Halo once upon a time. Mm-hmm. So... Like, all these screenshots and stuff that they've released, it looks like all the quarians from Mass Effect stumbled into an outlet mall on Earth and went crazy! And it's funny, because the, all those, you know, quarian-like creatures, I'm pretty sure those are just humans in armor. 
Um, they also have weird feet. Okay, well, messed up boots then. Um, but yeah, like all the characters they've showed off in this game are like, you know, have suits on. Right. Like visors and stuff, like uh, pressure suits or you something. You know, Master Chief-esque, but different. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, a little bit more flair to them, I guess. Mm -hmm. The beta for this begins on July 17th, if you apparently pre-order now. Yeah. And then the official uh, release is sometime in September, September 9th, which is great because, oh, it's actually terrible because everybody just went back to school. Hmm. What were they thinking? Well, I think they wanted to get a uh, advance on the, how should I say, the battleground nuclear holocaust that is uh, October. I understand, but if they had at least released a week earlier, I would have been happier, but whatever. But, uh, hey, you know, everyone's going to get this. There's going to be trash-talking 12-year-olds in this game from the start. Oh, you know it. Uh, well, and then th that's, of course, the biggest part of it. Uh, you know, it's an MMO, and as far as I know, there isn't a monthly subscription, so you just buy it, and then you play. There's a storyline yeah, that's the Guild singular. Wars model. Yes, but it's also a little the... bit different than that, too, because you can play offline, but and then play online, too. Yeah, the, uh, how should I say, the pay-to-play model. Which is a good model. Yes, it's been sort of like the default for every game release, mostly. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I don't know um, like what the point is. I don't know why white is associated with Destiny, but apparently there will be a special edition of white color of the PS4 coming on September 9th for just four forty nine, and you'll get Destiny included. So another thing to note here is that... Uh, this is going to be a timed exclusive to P uh, PS4. Right. So it'll eventually come out for Xbox. I'm not sure how long after this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it also comes out for PS3 as well. And I'm not sure if it comes out for uh, Xbox 360, but maybe. I'm not sure about that. But uh, like everyone's been asking, it's like, when is this coming out on PC? Never. But app uh, apparently at least the excuse that they've given is that, you know, the platforms we have right now are giving us hard time. So, you know, I maybe I believe them. Maybe I believe them. So, it, yes, it does come out on Xbox 360 whenever it does come out. OK, so another case of a game being tied to the current generation and not taking full advantage of the next gen. You know, I, in, if they had just done PC, I wouldn't have wouldn't have cared that they had targeted next gen. But if they didn't, their MMO wouldn't have had enough people in it. PC is kind of omni-gen. Right, exactly. But what I'm saying is, because it's an MMO, they had to get more people, so they had to include current gen, or last gen, really. Whatever. So, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the white PS4, not to be confused with the white X-Bones, which were apparently only given to Microsoft employees. <laughs> so, uh, Sony showed off the Order 1886. It looks like some sort of weird steampunk monster fighting game. Yeah, it's 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 very much like that. But there's also some like fringe magic too, I guess. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So uh, they showed off Entwined. In fact, this was actually released during the press conference. Mm -hmm. It looks like some sort of colorful flying simulator, but with some kind of strange storyline about birds. Like seriously, you can watch their little demo, and it it's kind of like um. Kind of like a DDR game where you have to like move in a certain pattern to you know hit the blocks flying across the screen, and it's not clear if you're playing against a you know an NPC or another player, but it has something to do with birds. And it was about at this point during the conference that uh, my v lovely Verizon FiOS could barely hold a 144p stream. You know how bad that is? Really bad. Pretty bad. So yeah. Uh, Netflix is in my pipes, yo, and taking up my videos. Is, is that how it works? I don't think that's how it works. Now, uh, let me just read to you briefly the YouTube, you know, description of the, the video of Entwined. Experience a tale about a bird and a fish that are in love but can never be together. Guide them both simultaneously over the course of nine unique lifetimes on a journey to unite their souls. A uh, nine lifetimes? So is there a cat involved? I mean, I don't even know what this game is about, honestly. Me neither. Yeah. So uh, they showed a little bit of Infamous Second Son and First Light. Uh, apparently, First Light is a DLC to that. Yep. So they showed off Little Big Planet Three, uh, which is like their sort of weird, like homemade, homespun sort of uh, platform game. Yeah. 
It'll be out in November. So Somebody might play it. Uh, then they showed off something called Bloodborne, which is something I've not heard of before. It'll be out sometime in 2015, apparently. It looks like you will fight more monsters. I think that's a theme that we're going on these days. Monster fighting. Yes. Yes. Um, they showed off Dead Island 2, uh, which is, you know, a sequel to the original Dead Island, I guess. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if it's actually on an island. Who knows? So, uh, they showed off Disney Infinity 2.0 edition. Which is a terrible name, but okay. Uh, which I think you're a little bit more into this than me. I'm not, but apparently it's coming sometime in the fall. And then I guess if you get the PS4 exclusive part, and I, and like, if you buy it on PS4, you get exclusive things somehow. You get access to the Hulk and the Avengers. And I don't know how those are Disney related, but apparently they are. Marvel, I think. Yeah, I don't, I don't do comics, so I don't know. They, uh, oh, apparently Disney own Marvel nowadays. Oh, is that how it works? Oh, I had no idea. Yeah, I think that happened like five years ago. Oh, well, it's see, I don't get... Pretty told. old. Yeah, I don't read the news, apparently, about comics. So, um, then they showed off Magicka 2. Um, I haven't played the original or even really looked at it too much. Uh, the trailer was pretty sweet. That cat was probably a jerk anyways. So, I guess I have to put a link to the trailer in here at some point. Uh, then they then they announced a Grim Fandango remake. Uh, there was and then there was much rejoicing, uh, but apparently some members of the PC gaming master race felt utterly betrayed. Something like Sony killed their pappy or something. Yeah, I don't know why. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's a remake. Does it doesn't matter if it was originally for something else? Well, I mean, it's already on PC. Uh, but, but then it's a know, remake. You're not losing out. Yeah. Um. Yeah, you know, it'd be nice if it came to PC, but yeah, I mean, well. if it if it didn't, I mean, there's probably already graphical mods for the original to make it look half decent, right? And uh, you know, and by half decent, I mean not poop stained, poop stained origami, or you know, 144p. Uh, well, there's textures and geometry issues. Yeah, macro blocking. Um, it came out in 1999, so it's terrible. Yeah. So there's so, another game, and it's called Abzu, maybe? Is that what it's called? Yeah, Abzu. something about water. So it is something about water, and uh, when you watch the trailer, you can get some imagery that looks very familiar to you if you've played Journey, and the reason is because the guy who made Journey's art, uh, I think his name is Matt Nava, uh, well, he's the one who's making this game. And it's much bigger in Journey than in Scope. Um, you're actually playing an actual person with legs and arms, which I know is unheard of. <gasps> uh, uh, and there's a whale in it, and there's a cave, and a lot of good scenery. And it looks pretty cool. I have no idea what the story is about, because I don't think they told anyone. It's exclusive to PS4. Oh, and you won't get to play it for, like, literally ever, because it comes out in 2016. So, I mean, I never played Journey, because apparently I never play those games. Um, did that even have a story to it? It didn't have words in it, but it did have a story. The idea is you're a person wandering around until you realize, hey, there's a big light in the distance. Why don't I go over to it like a fly? And then you go into it, and then you die. And Hmm. then you live again. Weird. And then the story happens. So, uh, then they showed off tons of indie games, which might have been where the threes came in, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't remember either. Um, then they showed off something called the Talos Principle, uh, which seems to be something like classical Greek or something. I didn't really uh, catch that too much. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure either. Uh, then they showed off No Man's Sky. It's a really colorful, procedurally generated universe simulator. Looks pretty cool. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, I think this might have been, in, uh, talked about earlier when their studio got flooded out or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really colorful and apparently like wherever you spawn, there's like a spaceship next to you. So you can hop in that and just like fly up and like go into space or something. Now I, I was reading about it earlier and apparently, uh, this, this, this group worked on another game. Uh, what, what game was it? Uh, I have, I have no idea. I have no idea either, but apparently they, I don't watch TV. they were famous for making other games. Well, the company, I guess, is called Hello Games, which is a very clever name for a company. Um, 
So I that mean, that name rings a bell for reasons I'm not sure of. Yeah, I don't know either. I, I, it's funny because I read about it but lost all knowledge. But so the uh, release date, you, know, you don't get one. Uh, the any other date, no, you still don't get one. Uh, then they talked a little bit about the PlayStation camera and Project Morpheus, uh, which they were apparently really awed by the uh, community reception of those things. And uh, stand by for YouTube integration, which apparently, uh, apparently they will be releasing sometime soon. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you can you know press your button, like share button or whatever on your controller and just start recording to YouTube or something. That's a great feature. I'm surprised it took so long to get but it's YouTube. Yeah, Who cares? Yeah, no one. Um, then they announced uh, the PlayStation TV is uh, going to be coming to America and Europe, I think. Yep. Uh, for $99. And if you, uh, they can throw in an HDMI cable and apparently Lego Movie, the video game. And a uh, controller. For, for 139 Yep. And apparently you will be have access to over a thousand older PlayStation games, and apparently access to video game v, beta games as well. Video games? That's that's kind of funny. Video games. And so this will also support, which I think is the cooler features. Uh, it'll support streaming through PS4. So if you have a game on your PS4 but you don't want to play in that particular room, you can stream this over to your PS TV and then you know play. And then in addition to that, you will also be able to use PS Now uh, if you pay for that and, you know, it ever comes out. Uh, so I believe they already have this in Japan. Yes, they do. So, yeah. Some of these features might be new, though, so I'm not sure how that works. I feel like the PS Now stuff is still somewhere in the distance. And apparently PS Now is how they're going to be playing older PlayStation games. Yes. So that's finally happening. Apparently, they're not talking about how they're doing it, so I wonder if they literally have a bunch of PS3s in the basement HDMIing out to some other mm-hmm. streamer. If that's how they're doing it, I pity them, and I weep. So, then they announced the Ratchet and Clank movie, uh, which is Ra- Ratchet and Clank something or other. Yeah, I don't know. It'll be coming out in 2015, and apparently Ratchet and Clank Redux is going to be a re-release or remaster. Yeah, remaster, of- probably. Of the PS2 game mm-hmm. going to be coming out about the same time. Just in time for the movie, apparently, so coordinated. Yeah, who knew? Who knew? So they announced something called Powers. It's going to be a, a TV show on their PlayStation now. Uh, apparently it's based off of a comic book series. Yeah, something like that. I'm not too sure what it's about or why they're even doing it. But, hey, who am I to judge? You know, it's probably something for them to put on their PS TV, but, you know, it's probably not really good. Yeah, so uh, there's going to be a PS4 remaster of The Last of Us, so that just came out not too long ago. Yeah, I think uh, that's releasing on July 29th. Yeah, so uh, maybe a month and a half away. And I feel like that makes sense because, you know, it came out on PS3 not too long ago and PC, of course. And uh, did it? PC? Did I it? don't think so. Oh, well, how did I watch it? Hmm, I don't know. Um, so if it's, I don't think there's anything new in it. So, uh, you know, by now or not. <laughs> so, uh, speaking of things coming to PC, uh, uh there's going to be a remaster of GTA five, uh, the Grand Theft Auto five that was released like about a year ago now. Uh, the trailer that they showed said it's going to be coming to PlayStation four, X bone and PC. So, um, you know, it's finally happening, I guess. Right. Um, so they also mentioned that uh, people with save games from uh, 360 and PS3 will be able to import those. That's pretty impressive. So it looks like uh, like Rockstar has their own network that they're using to do that. Mm-hmm. Because apparently, like, the Sony guys said, yeah, you can import games from your 360. So uh, they showed off a little bit of Uncharted 4, I think. Yep. Um. So, yeah, I guess the bottom line is that there's no news on a Final Fantasy or The Last Guardian. Yeah, so I don't know what The, the Last... Last Guardian is, but apparently people really, really, really want it. Yeah, apparently it was announced, like, a long time ago, and people have been clamoring about it since ever. Yeah, I, I have no idea what it's about, and, you know, games, they don't come out too bad. Yeah, and as for so... that, And as for the Final Fantasy... The the one we're waiting on, of course, is the so I think used, fifteen. Yeah, so it used to be thirteen verses, but now they rebranded it to fifteen because they suck, 
and you know Square Enix, right? And um, apparently we knew before the conference that it wouldn't be coming out at the conference, so I guess there's no surprise there. Yeah, and uh, just in general, as a side note, I kind of like how the Final Fantasy series got named. Yeah, isn't that great? Yeah, I mean, they're like, oh, like this company is going bankrupt. This will be the last, you know, fantasy game that we'll ever make. It'll be our Final Fantasy. And then and that's 20 that's later, the that, more that's than 20. The one that, that's the one that was actually popular. Yep. Who knew? Who knew? And, you know, it just happens like that. And now we just keep going and going and going and it never ends. Yes. It, you know, it just, you know, yeah, it's the gift that keeps on giving, I guess. Mm-hmm. Although, ironically, several Final Fantasy uh, projects have, you know, almost caused companies to go bankrupt. And uh, so, yeah. So uh, let's uh, talk about Nintendo for a little bit. Okay. Well, Nintendo. Hmm. Let's start off. Were they even at the conference? Hmm. No, not really. Sort of. Yeah, sort of, but not really. Yeah. They didn't actually have a proper press show. No, no. They they just broadcasted it from a pre-recorded videotape. It's something like what Google would do. No, Google would actually have a show. Like, they will well, in two weeks. Well, I mean, didn't they, like, uh, want to release something, but then they just, like, blog posted about it? Okay, so one time there was a hurricane, and their venue was kind of underwater, and the second time they didn't know which week they were going to do it, and apparently they couldn't get venue space, and so they just did it on their blog. So, yeah. Yeah. But Nintendo, they're they're literally welcomed with open arms at E3. There's no reason they couldn't just fly over and do it. So, yeah, could you tell us about some of this? So I can, actually. So apparently the uh, Super Smash Brothers on the Wii U will be coming sometime. You don't get to know when, just, you know, sometime. Sometime. And then in addition to that, the Super Smash Brothers on 3DS will be coming again sometime, but you don't get to know when. Apparently the first time that's come to a mobile platform. And so I didn't get to see the demo of the 3DS version. Uh, I really wonder what it'll look like because, you know, they've had that 3D Pokemon game for, you know, at least one gen now. And if it's going to look like that, well, then I'm just going to go cry in a corner. If it's 2D, I might be a little bit more, uh, okay with it. Uh, and I don't, also don't know what the interop will be between the two. We'll see. Mm. Yeah. So then they, uh, announced something called Amiibo. Which is a great uh, name, right? Yeah. No. So apparently these are like little action figures or something that you put on the uh, Wii gamepad. So, uh, and and apparently it's like a data storage device or something. Exactly. So it's kind of like a USB drive that doesn't connect physically. You just put it on top of it. If you've ever played or if you've ever seen Skylanders or maybe Disney Infinity um, care figurines, it's just like that apparently. So, yeah. Uh, personally, this kind of feels like a bad idea, but then again, my childhood was not all rainbows and unicorns, yeah, or even part of it anyway. Yeah, I don't really understand the appeal for this. Like my the one of the things about playing games on a TV is you can have whatever you want on there, but by limiting yourself to released figurines, it's kind of weird. But apparently, if you ever go to Target and and you go into their game section, you can see an entire huge swath of shelf space dedicated to Disney Infinity. Not sure about Skylanders, but Disney Infinity apparently makes tons of money. You know, to print a figurine, it costs, like, what, a dollar fifty, And they sell them for 20 bucks, so the margins are gigantic. And, uh, you know, it just seems to be more something that it would be tied to your virtual account somewhere. Exactly. But, you know, so... kids like to hold something. You know, kids don't understand virtual. Yeah, so... Mm -hmm. And then they uh, showed off a little bit of an unannounced Zelda game, uh, apparently coming out next year. Yeah, next year. We don't know really much about it. Um, apparently, for the first time ever, it's going to be an open world. Yeah, apparently the idea was to reevaluate the problems that they had experienced in their previous games, such as their previous games were on horrible systems. Hmm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, they they actually have a Wii U now, and apparently the Wii U is actually good enough to have, be an open world game, which is cool, I guess. So I'm sure uh, they'll then, find a way to make it suck somehow. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess so. I mean, it's kind of like what everyone's good at. Yeah. So um, then they said uh, stuff about uh, Hyrule Warriors. Yeah. It looks like uh, Link and other Legend of Zelda characters will appear. Yep. 
Uh, it'll be released on September 26th. And apparently this is like some kind of like knockoff of Dynasty Warriors, but with yeah. Link and company. I don't mm-hmm. know. See, Nintendo gets away with this, and I really think they should feel so bad. Like, it's fine to mix IPs, but it's not fine to mix IPs just because you're seriously trying to milk a series because you have nothing better to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Apparently, Pokemon. Yep. There will be Pokemon. Yeah, on 8-Bit a few weeks ago, uh, Savannah talked about this. I don't think we really know too much new about it because these are re-releases of old games, just, you know, remastered for the uh, 3DS 3D. What? What? 3DS 3D? Yeah, doesn't it do 3D or something? Isn't that the big appeal? Oh, wait, you turn that off? Oh, darn. Yeah, I don't watch TV. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't watch 3D TV either. So these are coming, both both the Alpha Sapphire and the Omega Ruby, which are just amazing names. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> these are coming <laughs> on November 21st, which I feel is like really late in the year, and I don't know what they're smoking. So a uh, Bayonetta 2 is coming out for Wii U. Apparently it's going to be packaged with the original. Which is nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Kirby Random Curse, uh, showed off something sometime in 2015. Yep. I'm really didn't pay much attention to that. Well, you know, I wrote that, but I don't believe it was called random. So, uh, Kirby some word curse, uh, and, uh, yeah, sounds good. Um, apparently they're going to be releasing something that's totally, uh, how should I say, unpronounced for Nintendo, uh, called Splatoon. Yes. Uh, that's not a remake or re-release or any existing series. No. Uh, for Nintendo. So Splatoon uh, is where you squirt ink all over the place, all over a map. And apparently, uh, it's like a capture the flag type of deal. Sort of, yeah. It's like, um, you, you, you're, so all the characters are squids. Yeah. But they're in human, they're humanoid can- though. Who can transform into humans. Right. And um, then back into squid. Yes. And then you squirt ink all over the place. As a human. And then when you're a squid, you can apparently like rapid travel through this crap. Yeah. And yeah. apparently you have like some powers as a squid or something. Right. So you can jump fast. You can jump fast and cool things happen. But so, you know, this is original IP. But the problem with it is it's not good original IP. This is like filler IP. Well, considering that, you know, the game ecosystem on Wii U is desperate. This is, yes. Yeah, I understand. Uh, there's definitely a market for this kind of stuff. But is there, like, do you, do you really, like, buy your $300 Wii U and then come home and say, oh my gosh, it's been a long day at work. I want to play Splatoon. I kind of lost you there at $300 Wii U. Exactly. So, but then, again, you sort of lost me at the $400 PS4. Well, right. So, uh, <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, they showed off Mario Maker, uh, coming in 2015. So, pretty much, you just make Mario levels. No, but it's not just Mario levels. You know, if I was making something cool like a Super Galaxy Mario level, I'd be so impressed. No, this is like Super, Super Mario, Mario Brothers. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's very basic level creation. It could be cool. Now, so you get to make these levels, but I don't know how you play them. They didn't explain that, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Have fun um, in 2015. This this sounds pretty simple, but I'm pretty sure that people will go ape shit over this. Oh, you know they will. So, uh then they showed off Xenoblade Chronicles X or 10, I guess. I don't know. Uh, for, I have no idea. Uh for 2015. So, you know, like I'm just watching the live stream here in my uh, macro blocky goodness. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm like, oh, they're finally like doing a gritty space thing. And then it goes on a little bit more. I'm like, hey, they've done this before. Mm-hmm. So uh, then there's going to be Mario Party 10 uh, in for also for 2015. Also not Mario Party X 10. Yes. Uh, a one zero. Yeah. So, and apparently uh, this Mario Party will be using those um, amiibo figurine things for something. Yeah. What it is, I'm not sure. So, uh, what do you think about Nintendo as a whole? Um, I guess we'll see Nintendo again in 2015. And until then, they'll be on vacation. Are you sure we're going to see them in 2015? 
well, I mean, that's what they want us to believe, but, you know, the, the, the biggest problem is the Wii U, and the Wii U, if, unless it sells units, we won't really see them. Yeah, um, but then apparently their uh, 3DS is doing absolutely fine. Yeah, it's doing great because, you know, kids can buy one for what, $130 to $170, and then they can play what is known as a game and not a joke that you would normally find on iOS or Android. So, um, or Ouya. <laughs> well, that's a joke <laughs> as itself. That, that's different. <laughs> that's intrinsically a joke. Take your three, man. Uh, uh, unlike the universe. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, so, my opinion about Nintendo is that, you know, they're essentially a company stuck in the past. Yep. You know, uh, like all their series that they're doing got started, you know, you know, if not before 1990, then shortly after 1990. Um, like, you know, granted, you can go on about EA, about, you know, releasing sequel after sequel after sequel. But, you know, at some point they do mix it up. Right, exactly. And, and Nintendo relies on the same ancient IP forever. And, you know, granted, you know, EA's games are up to number three and four. Well, and, you know, and, Nintendo's and, and of course, you know, the, all the sports games, the FIFA games and the Madden games. But those things follow reality. Star Fox yeah. doesn't. Yeah. Uh, Mario, not necessarily. But, you know, you know, but at this point, I mean, Miyamoto, he's like getting to be an old man. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, after he retires, I mean, what then are they? I'd imagine they just keep releasing Mario, keep oh, releasing I'm, Zelda. I, and, and, you know, there is demand for new Mario games and Zelda games and, you know, whatever. There is demand for it. But as a company, they need, they need to make a platform and an IP that is essentially the halo for Nintendo. Yeah. And they've, they've already have the platforms. <laughs> so <laughs> what know. uh you know the 3ds the 3d part kind of ignored and so what it's just the ds then great and so then they had to make the 2ds because the 3ds was too expensive for people who didn't care about the 3d and the wii and u is a joke motion sickness right well you know and the wii u is um you know a thing but it's not uh, a blockbuster sellout either so i don't really I- know about that at least you can go to Walmart or Target or wherever and find them on a shelf, like That's no true. problem. Um, you can find them and, on a shelf simply because nobody's buying them. And it's uh, finally HD. Finally, you know, after an entire generation. So I mean, it's a. I'd say it's a completely capable system. It's capable. So fine then. Maybe it is capable. But now they just need to sell them by making a Halo-like I mean, miracles- IP. Miracles have done have been done with much less. So Oh man, but they're digging a bigger hole every day. But yeah, so you know, Nintendo has pretty much been doing what they've been doing since ever. Uh apparently they still have a huge cash hoard from the heyday of the Wii, which is so, sad, but okay, fine. But I mean, you know, Apple has way more, Google has way more uh just like in the bank. Right. So, you know, I mean, I'm not exactly sure how much longer they'll last. I mean, they've been keep again, they've kept on doing the same thing. You know, if they're but... ever stressed for money, you know, there are effortless ways to make money. They they just release a 3D Pokemon on the Wii U, the the console becomes but... the best seller and it's instantaneous win. But like uh, Nintendo, Sony has pretty much kept on doing the same thing, but unlike Nintendo, they've actually succeeded. And that's pretty much by accident because their other competitor totally flopped up with stuff called Connect and like spying everywhere, like yeah. every fifteen minutes, something like that, and like always online stuff. Mm-hmm. So I mean, they're in every you know area and in every industry, every institution. There are certain things that you do not violate, and Microsoft, you know said, hey, we need to disrupt this stuff and decided to throw some of that stuff out. Uh, apparently, that was kind of like key to everything. You know, it could have been a really great idea. Like so, and, and this is blurring the show's topic a bit, but I mean, Cortana was released with Windows Phone 8.1. Cortana is the listening, you know, Siri-like agent that you can talk to and things happen. 
I mean, instead of having Connect listen to you, you could have had a Cortana-like thing on your smartphone and just beam the commands over to the Xbox One. You would choose whenever you wanted to do it. Or they could have just built in a button on the controller that when pressed, it would turn on the spe- or the mic and then you would just listen to whatever commands you wanted and it would just happen. It wouldn't be dependent on the Connect. There were right. solutions they could have looked towards. And, you know, going into the Xbox One... You know, they they clearly believed in the future of Metro, the future of Windows 8, and then suddenly realized, oh, crap, we just messed this up so bad. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I guess you can't fault Microsoft for at least having the balls to do something new. Right. So, I mean, okay, you failed, but you did something. So, uh, there's some other news that came out of E3 or for E3 that, uh, like, wasn't a part of any kind of conference. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Elite Dangerous released a trailer. Uh, this is the other Kickstarter comp- competitor to uh, Star Citizen. Mm-hmm. So it looks like they have, uh, you know, you know, plenty of stuff already there. Uh, you know, the uh, trailer that they showed was like pretty much like landing on some sort of a trading station, and you know, it showed off that oh, we have like hundreds and hundreds of billions of billions of stars in a galaxy. So. Uh, looks like the interface, at least, is pretty cool for that. It does look pretty good. So, uh, then there's Borderlands, the pre-sequel, and that'll be coming out on October 14th. This is just like Borderlands, but it's all loony. And apparently everyone who lives on this moon is Australian. Because, why the f*** not? Well, clearly because I, it's, it's kind of like a blood dragon of Borderlands. Uh, kind of, but you could also argue that Borderlands itself is kind of a blood dry. But yes, that is obviously true. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's, you know, more of the same irreverent and, you know, irreverent feeling for everything and the lightheartedness that uh, the other Borderlands games are known for. Yep. Um, I believe that there was also some other stuff about border, uh, Tales from the Borderlands, which is what Telltale Games is doing, mm-hmm. but they really didn't talk much about that. So, yeah. And there's also Homefront the Revolution. Uh, this is the sequel to, uh, Homefront. Uh, it's, this is one is being developed by Crytek, uh, after being auctioned off from THQ. Uh, this was like one of the spoilers, spoils of THQ. Um, apparently Crytek was already making, uh, the, the, uh, sequel to that. So they're like, Hey, might as well buy this outright. Um, so, uh, essentially if you missed the first one, it looks like something really weird happened and North Korea apparently rules the world or something. Turns out. So yeah, have fun with that. Yeah. So, uh, do you have anything else to add? I think that pretty much, uh, wraps up all of the major announcements that I, uh, Heard about and read about. So, uh, as of this recording, it is Wednesday evening. So, if there was something that, you know, really big happened, uh, at E3 either earlier today or tomorrow, well, you know, we really didn't, uh, you know, pay much attention. So. I don't think anything else of note happened today. I, uh, I looked, I got nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Because E3 is pretty predictable. You know, most of the stuff happens at the press conferences. And, you know, uh, you know, some of the previews that happen, you know, so. Mm-hmm. And of course, um, so 8-bit is currently hiatusing right now, but I think. Oh, I thought they were, I thought they were on sabbatical or something. Same thing. And, and so I think they'll be back next week briefly to talk about all the cool things that came out this week at E3, uh, you know, for like one, one last summer extravaganza. And then they'll be permanently AFK all summer long. So, yeah, looks like we might have to do something else with these podcasts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. So, uh, I guess I might have to get back to my, uh, Star Citizen. I still need to play through that Arena Commander. Hmm. Um, although I did hop in for like a few minutes and I noticed that my space garage was a lot bigger. So, uh, and, uh, in the meantime, I actually have have had a lot of fun playing the Road Redemption uh, Alpha build. So, uh, yeah. Uh, apparently cars hate you in that game. So, yeah. Well, you got to watch out for cars, so you know how to do it. <laughs> yep. So, uh, I guess that's it. So, uh, have a good one. Yep, have a good one.
So what'd you do all day, Bailey? Uh, I had a day job all day. What'd you do at it? Did you reach for your nuts? <laughs> I mean, I mean your carrots. <laughs> No, I ran out of nuts a long time ago. Oh, uh, what about carrots? Um, there's a CVS like right next door to where I work. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have those up there, I guess. Yep. Yep. So I go in there and I'm looking around for ho hos, or like off brand ho hos, mind you. So like I go up to the counter and ask, like, do you have any like ho hos that you know are off brand? So are those the short shorts you were talking about? Honestly, yes. <laughs> like <laughs> they are really really bad. Like I couldn't imagine. Well, so I got these new socks that are like uh so you're supposed to have them hiked up high uh-huh. and all like right. weird. Nobody can see that just so you know. It's here. I don't care. He doesn't want to see my socks. It's fine. Okay, well his socks are really tall. Indeed. Okay, Mr. Nazi. Oh yeah. <laughs> There's a T in it. Nope. There's got to be a T in it. <laughs> You say Nazi! <laughs> Crazy.